Hi everyone. I'm teaching Cypress Level Up workshop and there are a couple of questions that came up, so this video will quickly give answers to common questions about testing to do MVC. The first question that came up is, imagine I'm adding two to-dos, to-do A, to-do B, and then I'm checking that the list of to-dos right here shows two items. So how did I come up with this selector SciGet class to-do list Li? So one thing that I want to show is how I come up with selectors. So let's look at the markup. If I have these items, I have my main section, I have a header above, and then I have the footer. So all my to-dos are inside this list. It has a class to-do list, and inside I have li items. First item, second item. Now if I use Cypress selector playground and I pick a single item, it's a just pretty good selector. Now if I try to select an item inside the list, well, it really thinks that I'm trying to select a single element, so that's why the selector is not optimal at all. So this is why looking at Cypress best practices for selecting elements is important. So right now, again, if I look at my markup, I have a list with class to do list and inside I have li elements with class to do. So I think a good selector that will be stable and not likely to change is to select the list and then li elements inside of it. So this is why I came up with this. The parent is to do list class and then li elements. It's not the best like I'm looking at it right now, I'm using a class for the parent element and then the children element, I'm just selecting ally elements. Probably more consistent is to use both classes, right? Because I have to-do list and inside I have items with element class to-do. All right, so this was the qu first question. For the second question, we have a problem, an error. So I'm adding a single to-do and then I'm trying to check this number, one item left. But unfortunately, Cypress says unrecognized expression class equals to do count. So what we're trying to do is to confirm that this particular element right here, the to do count, has number one present. Okay, so this element has class to do count. A class is an attribute, just like data sci below is an attribute of its element. You can use attribute selectors because these are normal CSS selectors. You can say using square brackets, but I find an element with class to do count. So now notice it actually finds the element, right? It just doesn't equal one. But there's a simpler way. Instead of writing attribute class, you can just use dot. It's a standard CSS selector that gives you an element with class to do count. Now, Cypress querying command like SciGet, SciContains, SciFind yield a jQuery object. A jQuery object doesn't equal number one, does it? So what are you trying to do instead? Well, you're trying to confirm the text inside the element. Remember, on the page, everything is a text, even the numbers. So here we can say have text and we should have text one. Now notice we are selecting the parent element, the big element right around here, which includes one and the text item left. So instead of have text, we can say include text. Okay, so this is okay, but we can be more specific, right? We can say this element which one uh, to do count inside it has a data sci element remaining count that's the one that should have text one so we can say inside this parent element there is a data sci num i can use attribute selector and i don't have to use quotes because i don't have spaces okay and now we can say should have text one perfect let's move to the next question so i'm adding two items, Jan and February. Notice they're right here. So how can I 
come up with a single line that confirms the text in order for all those items. So right now I just grab the items. I can say should have length of 2. And now I need to extract the text from each item before I can compare it. So I can say then and I get again jQuery object. And I can use the low dash map method to iterate over jQuery just like I can iterate over arrays. And I can use a shortcut. Each element that I iterate over is a plain DOM element. It has inner text property. Remember, everything on the page is text. And once I convert this list of elements to the list of strings, I can use deep equals assertion and say gen fab. Perfect. So we had two items. We mapped each item to its inner text property and we confirmed the properties. Now, why do I have to use should have length two? Well, it's because side then is not a command that can retry. So I have to make sure that the list has been populated. And it's not a single one-liner, right? I have to get the elements. I have to confirm there are two of them. I have to map each element to inner text, and then I can confirm the list. If you use my Cypress map, then you can import Cypress map plugin, which adds query commands. Then I can avoid the whole thing and I can map each element to its inner text property instead of writing this syntax and it should deep equals gen and fab. So this is a one liner that can find elements, extract text in order and confirm that the list of strings is what I expect it to be. Okay, last question. So right now I have this test that adds a single item, finds it, confirms it's visible, confirms there's only one item, and confirms that it has a string first item. And notice that the first two assertions pass and the last one fails. And it kind of tells you why it fails. Expected this element to be a string. Again, you cannot directly compare a DOM element on the page with text. You can extract text and then compare it. So what you can say here, you can say have text. So this is a special chai jQuery assertion that actually grabs the text from the element. And now it says expected to have text first item, but the text was space first item. And this is because we're getting the whole item, which includes the checkbox and then the label. We are only interested in the text of the label, right? So here's what we can do. We can include text so which is an assertion that checks a substring. Or once we find this element, we can say first element uh, invoke text should equal, right? So should, okay, uh, first, and maybe we can say, uh, uh, instead of first, we can say find, and we can say label. So we're getting the first item, which is a big, list item. We're finding just the label element inside, getting its text and confirming it's equal to the first item. Now, this is so common, right? And site contains only returns you a single item, but this is pretty much a duplicate. Okay, so we can remove all of that and say, when you find a lie to do with text first item, equivalent text, we just say, just should be visible. That's it. Find all these questions and answers in the blog post that I will link from the description of this video.